in the last 18 months we've sold uh, half a billion dollars worth of uh, uh, tenements and mines uh, to China. We did a $10 million capital raising through some Chinese investors. Uh, one of those investors has come on the board of the company. The same day that Stern Hu was sentenced, other Australian mining executives were meeting here in Hong Kong to discuss how to continue selling to China and raising investment there. The reason being the view that economics trumps politics. Australia accounted for almost half of China's imports of iron ore last year. That and other commodities such as coal, zinc and uranium helped Australia avoid a recession during the global financial crisis. Meanwhile, Chinese steelmakers have invested in at least 20 mid-cap Australian miners to reduce dependence on multinationals BHP Billiton and Rio Tinto. One man who's been there before is longtime mining magnate Ron Manners. We were rescued by, by Japan in exactly the same way, late 50s, early 60s, and, and it made all the difference to the whole Australian economy. It lifted the economy and it stayed lifted for some time. We're going through that same phase again. If the lift is to remain this time, politicians like Barnaby Joyce may have to be overcome. He helped scupper Rio's $20 billion asset sale to China last year and in December was promoted to opposition finance minister. Chinese companies are... Oh, it's ridiculous. I mean, uh, there's no way the capital flow in Australia can sustain uh, the capital uh, that's needed to get these mines up and going. I mean, we were a, a market cap of uh, $30 million. How could we raise $2 billion to get our mine up and running? He's got a reason for, uh, for this uh, supreme patriotic streak, but uh, I, think, I think we can exist in a world without barriers. Manners may have his way. Australia's Foreign Investment Review Board says it approves the vast majority of Chinese deals, which means commodity producers and consumers will keep meeting to shake hands.